Welcome to the Page Family Homestead. Peggy Jean here and I'm like a Christmas. I'm totally excited. A friend's friend brought, they dispatched, oh, how many turkeys today? Quite a few. 30 to 40? Uh, yes. So, <laughs> they gifted me with the backs and for, for making broth, right? And these guys are going to be gagging, but I don't care. This is the feet. Feet. We got turkey feet. Look at this. Wow. This stuff is gold. So I'm going to put them all in the sink in ice water. I'm going to scrub the hell out of them. I'm going to clip the nail. Well, Andy's going to clip the nails off because that's going to gross me out. And then I'm going to throw them in my stock pot. I'm going to score the skin. We're going to make the best turkey broth. And look at the facts. Like, oh Holy my geez. lord. Wow. This, guys, I am the broth queen. I can't have enough broth. I can't have it. Like, turkey broth, chicken broth, tur uh, duck, duck broth, 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 goose, goose broth. broth. Uh, did I say rabbit? Uh, uh, we haven't tried. Did we if, do rabbit it, broth? Yeah, I did one. Oh, okay. If it hops or, or walks, I make a broth with it. Beef and pork. We used Look to know this. we used to know a girl named Lucy, but the, she was a broth. A oh, stock. <laughs> look, 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 wow, look. Awesome. Like look Ooh, at all, all this dripping. bounty. This is a blessing, people. And I can't wait to get it started. Stay tuned. We're gonna get gross. So, just cutting off any skin that I can't scrub, that I don't like the look of, for obvious reasons. And here, <laughs> yes, it's gross, but when you know the benefits, it far outweighs the grossness. Trust me. So, I'm going to clean all these feet up. They've been pretty clean. I think they washed them up. Look at that, it looks like a finger, eh? Cut off the nails. Probably not necessary, but I'm not cooking them with the nails on. <laughs> not happening. Look in here. I've got two roasters loaded exactly the same way. We've got five backs, carcass and skins. There's a lot of meat on there. And I'm going to probably put one third of the uh, turkey feet in each canner and then I'm going to freeze one third because these, these are backs as well. I think this one, yeah, these are all turkey backs. So I'm going to freeze these because this will be another two, three roasters and I'm going to process these two back in a bit. So we don't want the nails left on. <laughs> Ow! Don't do that. I already feel like I belong in the mafia. Right? Ah! Oh God! <laughs> don't do that. Look at that. Uh, hey, Louie, what did you do wrong? <laughs> One done. <laughs> uh -huh. the nails on that puppy. <laughs> These make such a remarkable broth. It's worth all this. It really is. Poor turkey never knew it hit him. Okay, they're going in the stew pot. Roasting okay. pot. I can't talk. I just cut nails off a leg. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa. There you have it. Okay. So we have two roasters filled with five turkey backs and feet from five turkeys. So 10 feet. Inside each canner are scrap onion, whole onion, onion peel, carrots, lettuce, or not lettuce, celery. Um, the onion skins help rich in the color and give beautiful flavor to the broth. So I'm just going to add my water and we're going to let this cook for three days and three nights. So for three days and three nights, 
I have been sending candy around the bend. Smells like Christmas, Thanksgiving. Look at this. Look at this. Look how dark it is. Ooh, thanks to all the collagen coming out of the bones. Oh, let's not forget. And the little feet. Look, look. It's all broke. Look there. All broke down. Looks like a little hand, eh? <laughs> that almost made me sick. But it adds so much flavor. It's worth it. Get over the queasiness. Look, cooked right off the bone. The onion skins help enrich the color. Hey, the Egyptians used it for henna's. It seriously enriches the flavors and colors of your broth or stock. So I've got two of these. Let me jump to the other. So here's the second. Look at this. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to bore you with it. Oh look, here's a, here's a turkey leg foot. There, there it is. I'm not going to bore you with it. I'm going to pull out all the big bits of bone. Don't forget there was five turkey bones in each one. Uh, turkey back, rather. So I'm going to pull all that out. And then we're going to strain. I'll bring you back for that. Hey, welcome to the Page Family Homestead. We're canning. What are we canning? That broth. The turkey broth. You know, I showed you previously the little turkey feet in there. <laughs> we had two roasters, electric roasters. Inside each, the turkeys were, they weren't huge. So I had five turkey backs inside each canner. Still had quite a bit of meat on it. Um, and I threw in 10 turkey feet because, you know, each one of those backs had two feet. Then to do the display, the little instructional on prepping the feet, I cut off an extra foot for each pot to show you how to remove the nails. Um, so there was 11 feet and five turkey backs. There were four carrots. There were like five onion skins. I saved them in the freezer whenever we use an onion. Uh, the onion skins enhance the flavor as well as the color. Uh, what else did I put in there? Celery. Um, I had some limp celery that got thrown in there and a jigger of apple cider vinegar. Why apple cider vinegar and why like a quarter cup should do. Um, it helps to break the collagen down in the bone, which helps release the marrow and all the nutrients and the calcium. So what I've done is I cooked this, roasted it for three days and three nights. Poor Andy. <laughs> Smells like Christmas in here. Did. It <laughs> still does. It's beautiful. I took the large hunks out. Now normally people will strain with a cheesecloth. I did not. I didn't want to. I don't care. I used a metal strainer from the dollar store that got out most of the well, all the big particles. The little particles you may see floating in here is nutrition. I'm not getting rid of it. It's not like I need the jar to be beautiful because I'm selling it or giving it out or this is for us. So I want those flavors. Did I skim the fat? No. No, I did not. Um, I'm not looking for low fat, low flavor. I'm looking for full flavor, robust broth. And look at the color. Look at that color. My chicken broth comes out the same color, guys. It's not this pale yellow because we cook it, for roast it for three days, three nights. We're getting all the goodness out of those bones. And like I said, those onion skins, they only help enhance the flavor. So it is a one inch head space and a good rule of thumb to determine the one inch if you don't have one of those little measure it outs. Um, the first lip, the first rim on your jar, from here to here, that's your inch. How much easier can it get than that? Now I don't know if I finished wiping, so I mean you can't wipe too much. I'm using vinegar. I've seen some videos where they have such a little bit of vinegar in there, it's like, don't worry about it. Put lots in there because we need the vinegar in our canner to keep the jars from being cloudy and gross looking. Yeah, uh, some of our uh, hot water bath sessions with Andy, you'll notice that he didn't put the vinegar in his pot. 
I on purpose didn't show him because that's the best way to learn is to forget. And then you know what kind of a mess you got to clean up with vinegar to wipe your jars after. So finger tight, okay? I'm not gonna crank it. When you crank it, especially pressure canning, you can actually buckle your lid. When you buckle your lid, you're not getting a proper seal. So when you take them out of the canner, sometimes they'll be like, oh no, the, the rings are loose. Yeah, they probably will be. Finger tighten them again. Leave them on the counter, right? So finger tight. Just look at that rich color, guys. Now I'm gonna be using my American Standard 921 canner. I have a, a, a Presto, and I'm not sure if my other two are Prestos or copycat versions. I don't know, I think they're Prestos. Uh, I have four canners, I had three. I found another one on um, Facebook yard sale site. Uh, I checked it very good, I know what to look for. You never wanna purchase a canner that has gone dry. There's telltale signs of that inside the canner. Um, I've heard some people say, if you find canners to buy and they're used and the um, gasket on the inside is cracked or broke, don't buy the canner. You're going to be replacing that gasket a couple of times in the lifetime of that canner that you're using it. Uh, that looks like I cranked it. I didn't. Okay. It's just loose. Um, finger tight, rather. You should all, if your canner has a gasket, you should always have a backup. They do blow, they do crack, they do split, um, they wear out. It's a gasket. Ask any mechanic, is a gasket for life? No. Um, I've also heard tell, please don't oil your gasket. Wrong. <laughs> well, maybe they mean like don't spray it like you're Jed Clampett. Yeah, don't. You wanna dip your finger in that oil your pointing finger and just do this with it so it's just filmed and just lightly coat your gasket that keeps it from drying out it keeps it from cracking it helps prolong the the life of your oh well, that's so close I'm, let's be exact um my american standard 921 does not have a gasket it's metal on metal uh, I've heard people put petroleum jelly on it because it doesn't get gooey as a lubricant. Don't. Would you, here's how I think. Would you stick your finger in the petroleum jelly container and lick it? No, it's not food grade. So why would I put it in something that's got my food in it, that's preparing my food, that's process? No. Uh, I use a, I've, people use vegetable oil. I, I tend not to have vegetable oil in the house. So we use olive oil. Does it leave a residue? Yeah. So, we got to wash it. Have I? Not for a while. But <laughs> it's okay. It's not uh, built up that bad. So I'll get to it when I get to it. Um, it doesn't impede the performance. My canner used to be beautiful, shiny, glistening like a mirror, but I used a snot out of it, and it says, don't use abrasive anything to clean your canner. Oh, I have. And so, uh, did it hurt my canner? No. But is it beautiful? No. <laughs> That's okay. It works for me. I don't work for it. So, I've got some somewhat used napkins here because I've already been started before I turn the camera on. I've already got the bottom layer of my canner filled with jars. Yes, I'm doing a double stack. Um, opposed to using two canners today. I don't want to have two canners on the go right now. Uh, I don't like my stove. So if I was outside, I'd have one in the house. If Andy was home, I would be doing one in the house and Two, two outside, but he's not here. So I've got my big canner, American Standard 921, and I don't like this one. It's not quite filled enough. One inch head space means one inch head space, guys. I'm gonna be bringing it up to pressure slowly. It's just as important as bringing it down. 
Uh, uh, there's a lot of videos. It's fine to live. I'm just poured a little in there. Um, there's a lot of videos that are showing people pressure canning and I don't advertise because, okay, I got my love for canning from a family member and I really don't know which family member it was. Might have been my own mother. She did some jams. Um, I then discovered, hey, the, the New Newfoundland people, and I say that wrong, um, they're, they're, they're canning fish. They're canning meat. That's how I got onto pressure canning. If they can can meat, bottled meat, you've heard of it, why can't I? So I started researching and discovered the world of pressure canning. I learned a lot off our Half Acre Homestead, Bev Foley. I learned a lot from Tessie. Uh, there we go. She just changed the name to her channel, so I'm sitting here trying to trying to think of it, and I can't right off the top of my head. I'm going to put both links, though. Um, in my description they're invaluable sources of information done the right way <laughs> so having gotten my love and my passion for canning from them it wasn't enough I needed more I needed to know I was doing it right and I was doing it safe so I enrolled in some courses because of COVID I was unable to complete the course however do I need licensing my life isn't going in that direction. I'm not going to go commercial. I'm not going to be selling my pressure canned goods. So why go through the expense? Am I sorry I took the course? No, I learned so much. I really have. And I know there's much more to learn about food preservation, but I was more interested in the pressure canning and we took that. So I go with what I learned from my two go-to people, Bev and Tessie, and I also go by what I learned in the course. However, I don't always follow the guidelines set out by USDA, FDA, LMNOPA. Um, I am a rebel canner, but I never, ever sway from the safety precautions and the safety measures used when canning I stay I stay true to that like okay rebel canner does that mean oh I'm only gonna fill it halfway and do it no follow the guidelines follow them by rebel canner I mean there's certain recipes certain things that people can that they do not approve why because they haven't tested them yet or with milk and butter the Dairy Association, they don't want us to know we can put stuff up. Come on, it's like the Wheat Association. They control the world. So I'm a little bit rebelish that way, uh, where I will also do packed meat. Um, I've never, ever canned a session where I did not research it fully, fully, fully. Um, it, if it was just myself, I might be a little more free range in my canning, but I'm taking the responsibility in each one of these jars. My family are consuming this. My grandbabies are very likely to consume this. Am I going to put an inferior or unsafe or questionable product on the table for my family? No. No. For myself? Well, I might push the buttons. Not for my family. I'm. They, they don't have a say in what's in this jar. I do. I'm the one preparing it. I want to make sure that I am not putting any loved one at risk. So follow the guidelines. The guidelines are very, very easily explained. Um, we're going to go through a few. So look at this. I've still got quite a bit in there. I've got a bottom full in that canner and I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I might have 18 pints in there and I still got another run. I might freeze this batch because I'm going to be doing a big soup later in the week. Let me just take us to the canner and we'll start from there. Okay, so I do have the required amount of water required for my specific canner. You have to look it up in your owner's manual. I want everyone to read their manual to determine what water is required in yours. I've got nine pints in the bottom. 
and I'm now putting nine pints on the top maybe we'll see we'll see if I, I haven't done a double load in a little while sure comes in handy I tell you you should see this kitchen when we get this one going in here and then I get two going outside I mean we're just rocking it's awesome when they all come out there we go so check that out double stacked now the lid how do I do this with one hand there are arrows on the canner I need to turn it around be right back now remember I said you gotta oil the rim a little bit so I just put a little bit of oil here on my fingers and I'm just going to lightly rub that across the top of my canner and with my other hand when I got the camera down I'm going to do it to the lip of my lid and I apologize this is murder to do with one hand I just I can't see the arrow here and there's a notch here on the bottom so we line those up and then we got to lock these pins in underneath each lip and I'll bring you back when that's done so this particular canner we have these bolts here on the side I'm supposed to do them opposite and tighten them up not hard don't crank them we're getting back into them again make sure they're all in there snug but don't crank on it okay we're not here to bust it make sure all the parts that are supposed to hook in are hooked in they are there we go my gauge is to the front now I'm gonna put this on number eight I don't really know this stove and I don't like it I'm putting it on number eight what I'm looking for and I've already lifted the lid and looked through the hole to make sure I could see light I checked everything I checked the emergency pressure pop thing there release okay so this this is a bone of contention in the videos I'm watching please people when you're canning please 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 research don't don't take my word for anything don't take a single person's word for anything watch it be intrigued be enlightened and go check go check it's your family go check but we're not even going to introduce the 10 pound weight for my elevation until I see a steady stream of steam escaping out of this spigot right here why inside the canner right now we have water and we have jars and we have air I want to build this pressure up to 11 pounds pressure it's required pints need 20 minutes quarts need 25 so in order to get that pressure heat to the proper level we need to expel the air out of the canner I want no air in this environment inside here is my environment I want nothing but water and steam steam is hotter than water and air we need the pressure to go higher than boiling and you're not going to get it if you don't expel for 10 minutes you're still going to get the gauge to go up and everything's going to look honky dory but you did not create a steam and water environment it's not a proper canning session i have my weight here for my elevation mine is a 5 10 15 pound weight these are relatively new in the canning world they're not old uh, they come with your american standard and a few other canners i believe and you can buy them separate so I look for the notch that says 10 pounds. Lighting sucks. This one's 15. And this one is, there. that one's 15. This one is 10. So above that hole, when I've had my 10 minutes, I've seen people turn it on, put the lid on and go, there. No, no, don't do that. Off. You want to expel the air for 10 minutes? I know it's a pain in the ass and it makes the canning session longer, but you want success. You're not looking for pretty jars that look nice on a shelf. You're looking for pretty jars that look nice on a shelf that's going to nourish your family, not kill them. Please do the expelling of air. Vent, vent, vent. Okay, I'll be back when we get to that. 
Looky there, guys. Do you see what I see? I hope the lighting allows it. Look at that. Steady stream of steam. I'm not putting my face in it. So, I've got 10 pounds I need, according to my elevation. This. This is when I've been seeing people. Hmm. No. Okay, so, still not time to put it on. I've set my timer. I've set my timer for 10 minutes. I need that to steam out for 10 minutes. Not nine, not skip it and put my weight on. Get all the air out of this thing. Ten minutes, we'll be back. Ten minutes of steady stream of steam, AKA venting. Important, please. The most important step to this whole session is venting the air out of this machine, out of this pot. So, one second. Ten minutes is up. So now I go to my ten minute spot, which is here. And ta-da! So now I leave it here. I'm going to start noticing my pressure gauge is going to start to climb. When it reaches ten pounds of pressure, my weight is going to do a little a little jiggle, a little spit. That's when I start my timer for my 20 minutes. Look how close we are. Now, the Google said 11 pounds pressure. My ball book said 10. It's probably going to hover around 11. I'm not worried. As long as I keep it above 10 pounds pressure, I don't have a problem. If I go under 10 pounds pressure, which you don't allow to happen, I'd have to start my timing over. Oh, there you go. There's the first jiggle. I'm going to set my timer now for 20, 20 minutes. I love that sound. It's so soothing to me. But I mean, normally when we have our full gardens, we are harvesting and canning from 6 in the morning until 9, 10 at night, non-stop. So that sound was it's just magic to me. Isn't that beautiful? Just awesome. And we only have 19 more minutes. Alrighty, so we've got 46 seconds and I'm riding them. I want them all. So, I'm really pleased. I started my stove heat on, I said 7 I think, but I started it on 8. So I let the pressure build at the very beginning slowly from number 8, knowing once I got the jiggling and started my time, I'd have to watch the gauge and make sure it didn't escalate higher and higher. And I didn't have to touch it. I didn't have to turn it down. Number eight is the sweet spot for a full can load, Andy, on this stove. Oh, good. Yeah, but I'm not going to have this stove You're not going to have that long enough to worry about <laughs> oh, that. Now you're going to have to yes. guess again. <laughs> I know, because I'm going to have to learn to cook on propane. Oh, that's going to be... Uh, and propane oh. accessories. Oh, there's the timer. What do we do at this point? We shut the timer off. And the heat. And I turn off my heat. And we walk away. You're learning. <laughs> you don't touch the no. weight. You don't touch the gauge, the nubbies, nothing. Um, certain recipes that I might be doing, I'll have Andy move it. Because that's what I hate about electric, is I'd have him remove it from the heat source. Because the element takes time to come down, right? But I'm not going to. We're going to leave it alone. Just... Leave, leave it alone. alone. Don't leave when the pressure on the gauge, if, I don't know if you can see the gauge. I can't see nothing right now, honey. Is it in there? It's yep, in there. There we go. When it comes to zero, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to set my timer and leave it for 15 minutes. And that will ensure that the pressure is gone before I remove my weight. Okay? okay. So we'll bring you back for that. 
up. Pressure's down to zero. Let's listen. It went. No. <laughs> <laughs> and this, oh, I'm used to putting it away right away, but it's over on the other side of the room, so I'll put it there for now. Now these we're going to unlock on opposite sides. Why? I don't know. We were just taught to. And the big reveal. Bomb bomb. Well, I actually need an oven mitt. Hang on a minute. I'll use this. Okay. So, I've just released the lock. Release the Kraken. And I'm just going to leave the canner to stand like this. Oh, I can smell it, man. Well, I know. Ten minutes, setting the timer. Back in ten. Smells good, eh, hon? Yep. Lifting still away from us because there could still be steam in there. Oh, oh, oh. I love the broth dance. I hope we get some dancers. Look, Look at, that. at that color. Beautiful. Oh, man. We should have the air conditioner off right now, but it'll be okay for a minute. Two inches apart. We don't want the jars clanging together. See, I got uneven. I'll have Round. to fix that. Yeah. Okay, one second. There we go. Oops. I had a fold there, so it was going to make it a little uneven. A ridge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of jars are coming out of here. Yep. Look at that. Beautiful Aren't broth. They beautiful. Look mm. how rich the color is. Let's see if this helps. There. Did it help? No, it's just darkening them. Did it darken there. it? You could lift that up in the light and you can see the color. Look at that. Still boiling too on the inside. Yeah, still at its oh, yeah. one inch head space. Yeah. I call this successful. Nothing, nothing. You can't buy this in the store. You just can't. First off, it's turkey broth. I don't know if you can buy it at all. Uh, secondly, look how rich that is. They I would know. dilute Beautiful. that so that it was golden yellow and they'd get like 10 containers out of it, right? Yeah, that's right. This way you get pure. So a box of broth from the store is four cups. This is two. So I w if I want the equivalent of a box of broth in a recipe, I obviously open two of them. That's very hot, by the way. Hot, hot, hot. Now the bottom layer. Oh, baby. I love broth. If I could can just one thing all the time and everybody shares that we all got everything. Oh, look at them dance. They're oh, yeah. Dee. You've just seen that one move. They're dancing. You come back 10 minutes from now and the bottom will just go blurb and just roll to the top. It's just beautiful. I love the rolling of the bra. Now, see, that's a little on a lip. There we go. Yeah. I don't like it uneven. How beautiful is this, guys? So, not that you can buy it, but what would you pay? All this was free. I had a, and you with me? I, oh yeah, I, was, uh, I know. I heard something like <laughs> I had a friend gift me all those beautiful backs and feet. So every single one of these jars is free. Oh, there's a it popped. They're still popping. And with broth too, don't be worried when you see it. Your jars are going to seal. They're going to go pop and seal. Then they're going to go pop and come back up and pop and seal. It's just because it's rolling and rolling in there. It will seal. Okay. But this is why we don't tip our jars. That lid is still floating until it's sealed permanently. And you could get the broth in between the lid and the rim of your jar and then it's not going to seal properly. Listen to it. I know. This one's popped twice since I took it I out. I know. I've seen that. I was watching the bubble on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Michelle, can you hear the pops? You got to do broth, girl. 
if the pops excite you, you need to do broth. Can you see this one back here? It's still rolling. Let me see. I'll bring it up for you. Of course, it's, you know. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it's like a dog that does tricks, never when you ask. Yeah. Is that all of them out of there? That's all of them out of there. And it's a clear bottom. We had a good session. Good. This was good. Good. Canning is easy. It's cheap. It's fun. It's nutritious. I know what's in here. Nothing in here. And I know those birds were raised organically and free range. So you can't. I, I just get excited over broth. I can't help it. Broth, okay. Broth, broth, broth. <laughs> anyway, if you like the video, please. Please follow the procedures and you will never have a fail. I have guaranteed my husband a beautiful broth, organic, seasoned the way he likes it, without chemicals and without botulism because I cared and I took my time and I did it right. That's right. You dance. Oh, look at it dance. <laughs> look at it. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one there too. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, that one just did too. And the one at the back is. Yeah. I see them, yeah. Oh, I could watch. I, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to watch them. <laughs> because I did it. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. Remember to comment below. We do appreciate the comments and we appreciate you ringing on that bell and coming ding, ding, in ding. with us. There's the bell. Yeah. Subscribe. See you tomorrow. <laughs>